So here we are at uh, the Rose Hall in the Eurythmy Room mm -hmm. at um, the Green Meadow Waldorf School. And maybe the first thing that you can do is give me your name. Well, I'm Ted McGlone, and I play the character of Romanus here in the mystery dramas now okay. in 2013. And uh, you were in the other, the, like a few years ago? Yes, started? Uh, last, I was in last year's performance. Um, and I was also uh, Johannes in the portal of uh, initiation, initiation. The first one. Yeah. The first one. Wow. So let's 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 start way back. Uh, was there any indication when you were a child that you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how do you how do you get where you are? I mean, you know, it was interesting. I was thinking yesterday um, during an intermission. I was thinking, you know, I did join the theater club. Um, in ninth grade, so there was uh, an indication that I was interested in theater. Um, and spirituality? Well, spirituality, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting um, evolution. Um, here in Chestnut Ridge, uh, there is uh, Red, School, Red School House Road. Mm -hmm. I went to the Little Red Schoolhouse. Did you? Uh, Red Schoolhouse Road. In Spring Valley, wow. Yeah, in Spring okay. Valley, the last year that it existed. And uh, then I was in a um, play group that a German kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Vogt, okay. um, ran just across from where Meadowlark Books is today here in this complex, fellowship uh -huh. complex. Okay. And um, she uh, would take uh, us to the fellowship Mm -hmm. And I would swim in the pond and be around the anthroposophical community as a child. Um, in fact, I forgot, I was um, a nursery school student here at Green Meadow with Mary Daly, one of the very first, first. nursery school students. Wow, wow. And, um, but my contact um, with this area um, stopped after you know, my, early, you know, my early middle childhood. Um, but it stayed with me as um, a remembrance of, uh, of something that, that, that had a place in my soul. So when I had my own children in my 30s uh, with my wife, mm. um, I was looking for a, a play group for my older daughter, Abigail, and my wife and I found the Waldorf-inspired play group uh, in Park Slope, and so we and a group of friends uh, formed this play group, and we did it year after year. We resurrected it. There had been an initiative for a school in Sheepshead Bay, mm -hmm. and then it had uh, evolved or devolved into the play group, and then re-evolved out of the play groups into what is today the accredited Brooklyn Waldorf School. Ah, okay. And what's interesting about that too is that one of the people who was part of the Sheepshead Bay. Um, school, uh, Pam Carlson, uh, talked to me about anthroposophy and Waldorf education as I was making a decision to put my children into Waldorf schools. Today, my 22-year-old daughter, <laughs> Abigail, is starting as her teaching assistant in kindergarten, <laughs> which is really sort of interesting. Wonderful, and, isn't it? Yeah. And my daughter's also starting foundations program with Brigitte Blaise Swinston, the art teacher oh, yes. here, who yes. leads foundation studies at the Brooklyn Waldorf School. Uh -huh. And we've been friends with Brigitte for a long time, and she was part of this initial uh, group of uh, Waldorf-inspired uh, play group that we had. From school that you were talking about? And yeah, so what? from that experience um, uh -huh. of, of having to relate to a being that wanted to come into existence as a, a school, a Waldorf school in Brooklyn, um, we learned about um, Waldorf education, mm -hmm. my wife and I, and the group we were part of. And then we hired a, a kindergarten teacher who was trained here at Sunbridge. And we went uh, up to kindergarten, and it was time to go to first grade. Would our daughter go into first grade um, in public school or to a Waldorf school? Well, mm -hmm. Most of the group we were with came here to Green Meadow. Ah, yes. And mm -hmm. we have been meeting that group of people um, every year for Easter uh, for the last well, 
Talk about continuity. 18 years or so, we all get together on Easter and we see, well, what's happened to our children, our families? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. There's yeah. real continuity there. And this is what careers, it's always very exciting to see how that group evolved. So yeah. we stayed together as a karmic group. Yeah. And we have many relationships with each other that continue to interpenetrate. Yeah. Um, and then um, we decided uh, to put my daughter, Abigail, into uh, the Waldorf School in, in New York, the Steiner School. They mm -hmm. gave us a generous scholarship. We were able to do it. Uh, and as that process continued, I got more interested in anthroposophy. Ah, uh, there. And went to this Bruno Steiner Institute and uh, began to attend lectures and read, do study groups. Was that Walter St uh, Steiner Institute in, in Maine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, other places too. Uh -huh. Yeah, because involved. they moved around. In other yeah. words, a summer school. Right, so that became really important mm -hmm. as an experience. Um, as did ongoing study groups in many and varied forms. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I've been a lifelong revolutionary. Mm -hmm. um, I was the first person in the world to write a dissertation on the Marxist humanism of Raya Dunayevskaya, which is a pure act of love. Uh, I love those ideas, and they led me to anthroposophy, uh -huh. because Marxist humanism, unlike post-Marx Marxism, which is um, not Marxist Marxism, puts the human being at the center and mm -hmm. freedom at the center mm -hmm. and talks about idealism and materialism being two truths, but not the whole truth. The whole truth being the human being who will appropriate the truth of materialism, which we might call Araman as anthroposophists, mm -hmm. the truth of idealism, which we might say the good side of Lucifer and yeah. being Lucifer, yeah. and then the Christ in the middle being the human being evolving uh, in, into the picture of the complete um, human mm -hmm. uh, and creating a new world. Well, um, I had that picture as a Marxist humanist revolutionary and I filled it out with anthroposophy thinking about what could a new society look like. Yeah, yeah. And so Rudolf Steiner gives us wonderful seeds and indications of how this picture that is very rich of the human being can work into our lives, renewing existing institutions, transform them, create new beginnings all around us. And it's not abstract, it comes from the whole person's multifaceted development. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and this is very concrete for me, this mm -hmm. multiple dimensional transformational process that being human involves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And so, if you uh, pay attention to it. And you must not only pay attention, you must act. Yeah. And yeah. so all the forces, the thinking, the feeling, the willing, uh, come through in an integrated way. Mm -hmm. and so a question for me now in terms of my evolution, I'm a college professor, I teach economics and geography, I've done so for 30 years, um, is about leadership. You know, mm -hmm. what is it to step into free leadership that comes out of kindness, that comes out of true authority in the sense of integrating all the periphery into the core moment, making the decision that you can, may not be the only decision that can be made, but one that is going to move us into that new renewal of social life. Mm -hmm. So it's this renewal, the social renewal of social life. I've been focusing on uh, Steiner's economics, because uh, I'm in that field. Three foot. Three folding, mm -hmm. uh, and, and teaching at the Garden City Waldorf School. The, the Are you aware the, of Charles Eisenstein? No. He is doing that, and he is, he, he found anthroposophy because he was doing three folding before <laughs> he's into the banking and into, you know, how that all can happen. It's, it's an amazing fellow. So, uh, you know, in, in my teaching and arranging main lesson courses for uh, Waldorf students, it's so important that um, I not only teach them about the history of economic thought and Steiner's relationship to that, mm -hmm. and the picture mm -hmm. he has of threefolding, but how young people can step into this world with leadership. Mm -hmm. with, uh, because their idealism, not in the Luciferic sense, but idealism in the sense they didn't make the world, yeah. um, but they have high ideals and they want to bring those ideals into reality. Well, which means they want to bring their destiny, I mean, they want to find their destiny and live the passion that 
that they came to be incarnated exactly. for. Right. You know, so. So, how, you know, so what I'm looking to do is to step into the space in my own life that embodies that kind of trans anthroposophical transformational um, quality mm -hmm. and uh, convey it in the classes I teach, mm -hmm. uh, communicate it whether it's in uh, the college, St. Joseph's College I teach at, or whether it's in the Waldorf School that I, mm -hmm. I teach 12th graders at, to give them a sense of, oh, these are people doing projects, initiatives mm -hmm. uh, that I could see myself doing, and I might have some ideas about what I'd like to do. So they get a sense that uh, the social world is not a closed world, but an open world yeah. for initiative. Yeah. So how did you get, how did you get into the mystery place then? Uh, I was in a speech workshop with uh, Barbara Reynolds at the Threefold Auditorium during a conference that was held here. And uh, she looked at me and she said, you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she I'd does like, that, doesn't she? <laughs> I'd like you to, to join uh, into yeah. the mystery place. Into the mystery Strauss. place. And uh, uh, she, I think she thought a little bit about Strata and then um, she found somebody for Strata and then she said, well, there is Johannes. You could play Johannes. And I said, okay. Yeah. Little did I know <laughs> what that would involve. It's quite a carrying. But yeah. for me, as a shy person, um, yeah. as a person who grew up as a poor kid, you know, with uh, a lot of difficulties in, in um, showing who I was to people, because I was a little shy mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. my background, my family, mm -hmm. the problems we had. Being in theater has really helped me self-develop so that I can step into a space. Yes. And, uh, of relating openly and clearly to other people much more than I could in the past. Exactly. With more of my uh, soul forces operating and knowing more about what it is to be human. So uh, I think, you know, the, the path of uh, acting that um, is possible for those who participate in mystery drama projects oh, yeah. is a path of self-development, not in, for the individual, but for all of us. I mean, we, as an ensemble, we go through all kinds of relations <laughs> together exactly. and develop, and it's very rich because it's a moment where we bring down some of the anthroposophia, the moment of, 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 of wisdom and love and freedom that's part of the, um, the beautiful spiritual reality that is being portrayed on stage. So we bring that through. So how, how, how does your role as Romanos uh, work with the, like what kind of interactions do you have with the, with the manager? 